everyone and welcome back to our daily actually daily Quint Novigrad card review series as you can see there's no Ryan next to me this time we actually have Wilson James Jim Wilson here you probably know him from our uh, well, team or choose a discord and you also have encountered him a lot I'm sure so welcome Wilson and glad to be here thank you for having me of course like this is uh, is exciting uh, I'm really excited because um, Ryan currently is actually on a trip, and uh, we thought we have only three cards to reveal, and then he just like snuck in like the fourth card, which is currently revealed on stream while we're actually recording this. So, um, good news. I would say we'll start with um, the first card, and then as always, we just go for all the cards, and let's see. Okay, there we go. First card is the Flying Redanian. It's a four for 10, and has Horde nine. On turn end, summon this unit from your deck or graveyard to a random that row and i already love it i already said in the last video horde is my favorite <laughs> keyword and this just plays even more in the horde archetype this is amazing what do you think yeah i mean this card is to me uh like my first impression is this card is just like the nuts i think it would see some play if you removed the graveyard part of it if it was just like a four for ten roach with the horde nine condition um, and then whenever you add the graveyard part so you can get like the recurring benefits off of it, this card is just insane. Yeah. I mean, it depends a bit on how easy it is to get Horde 9, but uh, assuming that it's not, you don't have to try really hard and play bad cards in order to do it, I think this card is insane. I mean, we already know that one leader, Gudrun, actually can just get you 9 cards just on an order ability, so this will trigger mm -hmm. this card for sure. I think my biggest, or the biggest condition is that to actually get this into the graveyard. Because if you don't play this in Skelliger, like you can't, it's, it's a syndicate card, uh, there's not that much option actually to like discard cards or like get cards from your deck to the graveyard, like with Darren, for example. So you actually need to play this or like really try to get some synergy in there to get this card into the graveyard. And I think that's the, 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 a bit of the tricky part. Yeah, it's going to depend on like getting it out of your deck in round one, how how easy it is to... Because in round one, you want to be playing a lot of bronze cards mainly. Mm -hmm. And from what we've seen so far, a lot of the crown generation cards are gold cards. So you don't really want to spend them in round one. So you need to find a way to get nine crowns in round one with mainly bronze cards comboing together. So that might be a little bit more difficult. But um, assuming that you can do that, I think this card's really good. Really yeah. good. I mean, yeah. No, nothing more to say. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, then let's go into Bincy. Bincy. Bincy Blamahold. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a four uh, power, ten provision, um, uh, range locked, and it says whenever you uh, gain crowns, uh, you boost by one point for each crown gained. Um, and to my understanding, this means that um, you only boost it for each instance of gaining crowns. Um, uh, so it like all the boosts come at once, sort of like how Hemdall works with um, mm, yes. damage from a warrior, where you get all the points at once. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, and I mean, uh, this card obviously has some synergy as a finisher with uh, like Gudrun, um, where you get nine crowns all at once, and then it plays as a thirteen for ten. Um, uh, other than that, though, I kind of have worries that most of the points are like green strength. It's boosting, um, so it's bad against resets and tall unit punish. Um, and then also you have to consider um, how difficult is it to get like large enough amounts of crowns at one time um, that you protect this card from just being removed. Um, so I don't really know how to evaluate this card. What do you think? I mean, the question is like how many crown engines you can get for example if you have two crown getters so say like the, which gets you two points per turn it could be i'm actually or it could be some other um, engines then this would already be at six which makes it already hard to remove in round one but of course like big removal and stuff like that happens uh, afterwards as well so the question is like how many big units do you play anyways like because you typically can't remove one or two um and also the question it's another engine so if you have like more engines on the board which one do you lock, for example? Like this is just just one more. Um, for example, also if I if I want to have an Avalach in my deck and I want to like protect my key engines, then I probably would protect my crown generators. Maybe not mm -hmm. so much this one actually. So I'm a bit torn here. It's I don't want to protect it, and it's not easy to protect. So <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, and typically like the two-part engines, like you see cards like uh, Dandelion in Northern Realms, um, where it's an engine that like works off of a second engine. Um, those have historically not been very strong because it's a lot of setup and a lot of investment. Um, and so whenever you invest that much, you want the payoff to be super high. Um, and this needs a lot of crowns to be generated just to break even on provisions. It's super expensive. Yeah, I um, think I think one situation is if you, for example, have Imp Candy Board and you play this as your sec uh, as, as the last second last card, and then you finish with Good Run, for example, provided that you actually have a nine point spender in then in your last card, mm -hmm. so to say, um, then this would just be really good. Um, but if you like start off the round with this, it's like very dangerous, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's a fair point. I mean, it would boost to what six points right away, and so it'd be hard to remove with damage, and it wouldn't be vulnerable to uh, like the tall unit punish. Um, but then it would also get the benefit from the last say, um, hmm. and I think it would get boosted by MK one more time. Even though you couldn't use those yes. last two crowns, it would get boosted one more time. So yeah, so you have actually four points for MK, but like two, so he gets onto six, so it's not removable right away. And yeah. okay, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this will see play, I guess. Um, it really depends on the yeah. decks around it. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting to say the least. That is true. Okay, let's go to the next one. The Tide Cloak Ransackers. It's a 2 for 4 bronze card. Deploy damage and enemy by 2. Death Blow gain 2 crowns and Horde 5. Trigger the Death Blow even if the enemy unit survived. So if we talk about crown to point ratio again, like 1 to 1, kinda. Then this is a is is it four for sure? A conditional six for four, and if you already have five crowns, then it's a straight up six for five. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it seems like a pretty good card. It's uh, continuing the theme we saw of the last expansion, where every faction got their own like wolf pack card, yeah. um, which is like a conditional six for four. Um, but I think uh, I mean it depends on how easy the horde five is to get, right? Because um, this is a card you really want to be playing early in like round one. Maybe you're playing like Squiatel and they want to pass at seven. And so you want to get this card out as soon as possible. So um, there's that trade off of how easy it is to get the Death Blow versus how easy it is to get Horde 5 that early in the round. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it is a four provision card with upside. And that can even play for like a little bit of carryover with the crowns. Um, so it seems at least playable yeah. at first glance. About the Horde thing, that's generally something interesting. Because you just don't want to generate crowns because if you have just nine crowns and like you don't do anything with it, you just waste a lot of right. points, right? So just playing mm -hmm. for the horde alone is kind of like, hmm, I don't know. So you need those spenders and this is why I'm not always sure when, when you want to play those horde cards because you want to play them after you get crowns but before you play your, your spenders and this is a, 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 a tight condition. What happens if the enemy passes in between? What does, you know, there's, there's just so much there. Um, it gets your sequencing of your hand. Like, this will, it will just complicate things. I like it on one hand, but on the other hand, I don't sure how, like, this impacts the card. The card itself, I think, is just fine because even if it's, like, just four for four with the two coin extra, it's still bad in Wolfpack, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, six for four is, is like, a Skellige level bronze, right? It's yes. a Ravager. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah, so we'll see. I think it'll definitely see play. Yeah, I think so too. Then we have the last card for the day. We only have four cards today. And sadly, do you know the name? Because I I don't know the name. I have not seen a name associated with this card yet either. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's uh, three power and four provisions. Um, its deploy effect is to gain vitality for the number of crowns that are in your bank. Um, and then if you use tribute, which you uh, spend three crowns on deploy, um, instead of getting vitality, you'll get boost. Um, and so looking at this card right away, I never really see an instance where you would play the tribute three, because then this would just be um, <laughs> like... A, uh, this would have like almost no upside to it, basically, um, unless you absolutely have to dump your crowns. Uh, but I don't really see when that would be the case. But yeah. I think this is a, this is a really good card in round one. What do you think? I'm not sure. I mean, this is like a card. It's like it's this bronzes that you that you need to play if you drew it, but you kind of like would like to play other cards. I, that's the feeling which I have. It's okay to have because it's a. Um, 
for duration equal to your account card. I mean, like if you play this in like you, you start with a good uh, a good profit card, for example, like four profit, bam, and then you mm -hmm. follow up with this, then it's pretty good because either the enemy wants to play some removal on it, which um, is good because like it played removal on a four provision bronze card, so you can maybe play some other cards instead. Um, maybe even the tr hmm. yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. I think, as you said, like the tribute curse is probably not worth it because it's, it just doesn't relate in points. Except you really fear, like if you play full against the full control deck or something. Uh, I think the vitality is just fine because it will already trigger on the end of the rounds. It's already a four for four, so it's not a three point removal there. Yeah, I mean, I think this card's really good in round one, especially because um, it's only four provision cards, so it's really low commitment. And as assuming that you have some coins in your bank, you have maybe three or four crowns yeah. um, when you play this. Um, it comes down and in the vitality immediately procs once, so it's at four. Exactly. And then if they were to try to pass on it, it would come back to your turn and it proc again. So it'd be basically like five tempo. Um, and it puts another threat on your board that they have yes. to deal with, especially in round one. The, not many factions have efficient ways to deal with the four, unless you're something like maybe Croc, because they have the leader ping, which is non-committal. Um, but other factions maybe have to spend a gold card to deal four damage to it. And then you trade it uh, up massively um, yes. while committing basically nothing yourself. Uh, and then if they don't answer it, you play it right before they're going to pass. Then you get this, and it gives you reach. Um, and it, you just get good value out of your four provision cards. So I think it's great in round one, and it's okay if you get stuck with it in a later round um, because it doesn't play for like really low tempo. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I think this definitely will see a lot of play. I th yeah, I think you're right. Like the, the, the round one is probably the best instance to actually play this because round two, enemy could always pass on you as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, and we see. Uh, from Skellige, this patch, Priest, how much pressure that yes. card applies because it's yes, yes. an engine that procs and then procs again when they try to pass on it. And um, I mean, that card has the upside of having synergy with your self-wound cards. Uh, so, of course, we know that card's already the nuts. But in a similar vein, putting a threat on the board in round one that's low cost to you where the opponent has to commit a really good card to remove it. Um, or else it just gets good value is uh, yeah. extremely valuable pressure. It's not even it's not even about like the the good card. Like the good card is just a bonus thing. But if you're playing an engine deck and you just include this, this is your this is the best bait you probably can play right away. Mm -hmm. And either it goes through and you get the points, or your engines are way safer. So yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I we've seen some gold engines that you definitely want to protect, like MK um, and cards like that. Um, and even the card revealed today, like the Flying Redanian, I mm -hmm. imagine that some decks will tech in um, Northern Wind, the five provision bomb that will mm -hmm. banish a unit that's four power, or it does four, four damage and banishes the card if it kills it. Um, and this would be a card that um, could potentially that's bait that out. <laughs> that's true. Okay. Yeah, cool card. This is, this is it already, I'm sorry. Only four cards so far. Maybe like some cards will be re revealed later this evening, but we're going to cover that tomorrow. And maybe even Wilson comes back tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> maybe, we'll see. So if you want to check out Wilson, um, check out Team Reduza Discord. He's always there. He's actually very helpful. He helps a lot of players, uh, answers questions. Um, so pretty, good, uh, pretty cool guy. And if you want to see more of the... Um, this Grand Novigrad card review series, then just hit the subscribe button below and well, check the Team R2 the homepage regularly because that's where we will put it up. And otherwise, I would say hopefully see you tomorrow. So, bye. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for stopping by.